Uh, I want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar, Ignore Device Network Interaction and Risk Your Customers, presented by Azimuth Systems. Our presenters today are Vivek Vadakupatu, Director and Head Analytics Business at Azimuth, and Nandesh Chalashazar, Director and Head of Engineering at Azimuth. At this time, I'd like to turn the presentation over to Vivek. Thanks, Kyle. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here. Um, my name is Vivek. I run the analytics business unit here at Azimuth. I'm here with my colleague Nandish, who heads the engineering group for the analytics business unit. We're here to talk about device network interaction and the importance of device network interaction in guaranteeing end user experience and the network ROI. Before we get started, a very quick introduction to Azimuth. Some of you might know, Azimuth Systems has been around since 2002. We've pioneered um, in real-world testing, be it in the form of emulating real-world conditions through our AS emulation platform, or automating real-world use cases and analyzing real-world performance through our analytics and automation solutions. The focus of today's webinar is going to be our analytics and automation solutions. Moving on to slide three. So as a backdrop to everything, one thing you find is uh, the technology is getting very, very complex. Where each time we've gone from a new generation, you go to 3G, you go to 4G, you go to 5G, you find the technology has got more complex. Right now you hear about Volti, carrier aggregation, beam forming, HetNet, small cells. There are a lot of things coming down on the technology side. And going hand in hand with that, what you also find in general is devices and networks, especially devices, are getting more intelligent and more smart. More and more intelligence is being passed on to devices. As a consequence of both of these things, what you find is devices and network interact with one another a lot more. The number of device network interactions has gone up significantly in newer generation technologies compared to legacy technologies. And not only has the number of device network interactions gone up, the device network interactions have also become more complex in nature. However, what you find is testing hasn't caught up. Technology's got more complex, but testing hasn't caught up entirely yet. And what I mean by that is most of the testing that is done today, testing or analysis, is very, very siloed in nature. And by siloed, I mean that people look at verticals, such as infrastructure or device, or look at horizontals, such as application layer performance or layer one performance. But at the end of the day, both testing and analysis is very, very fragmented. There's very little of end-to-end -end view. So you might ask the question, so what is the consequence of this? What is the consequence of us not taking a holistic view? What is the consequence of us taking such a siloed view of performance? And the consequence of that is you never get a complete picture of performance. Let's take a very simple example. If I'm an operator, and I use this approach today. I test a device. I may test a device, find that the device performs well as per my specification, specifications, decide to release the device, and then find that the device has some issues that I didn't catch early on, issues serious enough to bring down the entire network. So let's look at this with a simple example. I'm going to pick the use case of benchmarking. Benchmarking, in fact, is probably one of the most common use cases. When we talk about benchmarking, it could be benchmarking devices, so you compare one device with another device. It could be benchmarking networks, comparing one operator with another operator. Or it could even be regression testing, where you take one version, a device with software version A, compare it with software version B, and look at the performance. Many times what you find is you might have two devices, on the same network, but very different user performance or very different application performance. So you have two devices, YouTube takes longer to uh, stream on one phone compared to another phone. Or if you were to look at it from an operator standpoint, what you find, uh, again, sometimes is 
the two devices might offer very similar application performance. So two devices might offer the same throughput. So two devices may offer the user the same. But the impact of one device on the network could be significantly different than the impact of the other device on the network. So what we really need is given this growing complexity of technology and the fact that existing methods don't give you a complete picture, what we really need is a holistic approach, a holistic approach both to testing as well as analysis. Now this is easier said than done, having a holistic, uh, taking a holistic approach to testing and analysis has some challenges associated with it. One of the fundamental challenges is the, is the evolution of technology. As I mentioned earlier, you, we have newer technologies that are coming out, technologies that are more complex than earlier technologies. And the other thing to also keep in mind is many of these technologies are still in their infancy. Unlike uh, voice or data, which we as an industry have had a lot of experience working with, dealing with issues, these are very new technologies. So when I have a Volti issue, it's not like I have five years of experience to tell, okay, this is what I saw, this is probably the root cause. So that is the first fundamental challenge. You're dealing with complex technologies and you're dealing with technologies in, uh, in a nascent stage. The second challenge is the testing approach. As I mentioned, testing is still very siloed in nature. You focus on um, either the device or the network or, or you focus on just a particular part of the performance. You look at just application layer performance or a different aspect of performance. And the second thing is performance with little context. What I mean by that is many times you see these reports published in the industry where people compare one device with another device or compare one network with another network and they would tell I compared operator A and operator B and operator B was worse than operator A. But what's missing in all that is the context. Context to tell, I, I compared operator A and operator B under these conditions. I compared them not just at the user level, but I compared them at layer one, layer three. So what's really missing is, to con is the context around the performance numbers you get. And the last part of the challenge is really the tools. What tools do you have at your disposal to take this holistic approach? So as I mentioned, whether it's testing or analysis, we take a very siloed view of, uh, very siloed view. Second thing you find is even in instances where tools decide to take a more holistic view, if there's a lot of information overload. Today we live in a world of data and information overload. RCR Wireless recently ran an article which talks about big data analytics and highlighted how one of the biggest challenges there is when people have these humongous data sets, when I have 100 GB of data, and out of the 100 GB of data, what is relevant to me is only maybe 50 MB or 1 GB of data. How do I eliminate the noise? How do I stop wasting my time on the 99 GB or 99% of the times where there is no issue and quickly get to focus focusing only on parts that are relevant. And then the last challenge with existing tools, which in some ways is because of the second issue with these tools, is these tools are just too complex to use. I'm an engineer, but what I find is I go take an existing tool and I just want to see, okay, I saw a voltage call drop, I saw a one-way audio call, what is the root cause for it? It's not easy to find out the root cause for the issue, or at least isolate whether it's even a device or a network issue just because there's a lot of information and for you to remove uh, all the clutter and go from this data to relevant information takes a lot of time and expertise. So what we saw is te technology is getting more complex, testing has an entirely caught up and there for that and one of the things is the approach we take, the very siloed approach we take and the fact that the tools we have today are designed for legacy technologies and not necessarily technologies that exist today. So what we need is a revolutionary methodology that gives us a complete view of performance. And Nandi will talk to you about this new methodology that gives you a complete view of performance so that you have confidence that when you've done your testing, you have got to come, you have a, a comprehensive idea of the performance of the device and its impact on the network.
Thanks, Vivek. So I'm glad to be here. This is Nandesh Chalisajar, and I'm, and I'm glad to be here to talk about the methodology that would address some of the challenges that Vivek just talked about. So what is the solution to some of the things that Vivek mentioned about siloed testing, looking at information with very little context, and trying to debug issues in a fast and efficient manner? The solution to all of this is device network analytics. As an analogy, device network analytics is nothing but peeling the different layers of an onion. If you were to take the traditional LTE protocol stack, it has different layers as part of the stack, like the physical layer, the MAC layer, RLC layer, PDCP layer, and so on. And if you were to look at the, 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 the elements that are part of this device network interaction, like the EUE and the eNodeB, all of these different protocols are working with each other. They are interacting with each other to deliver a great user experience to the end consumer, whether it's in the, in the order of making reliable connections or it's in the order of getting the best data speeds. What really is happening is all of these different protocol layers are working with each other, and they're working with each other between the device and the network to deliver a great performance to the end consumer. And so device network analytics is a methodology to understand this complex device network interaction across all the layers of the protocol stack. If you need to solve a puzzle, then you, then you, need, to break down, then you need to look at the individual pieces of the puzzle and put it together. Similarly, if you need to look at a complex network or a complex LT network performance, you need to look at the individual layers and how they play with each other between the device and the network to really get an end-to-end -end view of the performance and its impact on the network. And that's what device network analytics is all about. And the reason why you do it is because it facilitates quick identification and isolation of root cause of user and network impacting issues. I think today it's pretty fair to say that with the complex technologies, it's, it's taking a very long time to identify issues. One of the challenges is Root causing issues is definitely one of the big challenges, but even on top of that, there are still a lot of the issues that the end consumer really experiences that were not caught as part of the operator testing or as part of the infra vendor testing. And the reason for that is if you don't look at device network interaction holistically, then you're not even able to identify all the right issues ahead of time. And once you identify it, it's taking forever to isolate root cause of issues. And that's where device network analytics comes in to really facilitate quick identification and isolation of the RCA. Going to the next slide. So what's the need of the hour? So we know that device network analytics is a solution that's required to really solve some of the challenges that we just talked about. And if you look at this graphic, it basically points out that peeling an onion is a very painful process, whether it's in your personal life or a professional life. And that's where Device network analytics is not a trivial thing to solve. It, 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 it does take a lot of time to look at all of these different layers and understand what's happening between these different layers, conclusion that this device or this network is ready for launch. And so if, if the problem is complex and if device network and analytics is complex to do, what you need today is an easy to use and effective solution that will help you understand device network interaction and deliver great user experience with the best ROI. I think that's the key. What's being missing in the industry is an easy to use solution, which is not just easy to use from, from a user experience perspective, but easy to use and effective to identify all the right issues ahead of time by looking at all these different layers and, and giving you insights into what are the problem areas. And once you know the problem areas, providing you with the right correlation to help isolate the root cause of the issue. And I think that really is the big need of the hour where once you know what your challenges are, what you need is the right tool to really break down these different layers and show you the right information in the most easy to use format that you can then digest to identify actionable insights that you can take to improve both user experience and network performance at the right cost. So next, we're gonna talk about how we've developed an in-house solution and how the solution has been used for real world case studies to help catch critical or fatal issues before the device or network was being launched. I'm gonna share three specific case studies 
where we've used our device network analytics solution to identify and isolate the root cause of critical issues before they hit the end consumer. The first case study over here is the scenario where device network analysis revealed excessive signaling chatter. So the background for this case study is there are two devices. One was a reference device, and another device, which was the device under test, was a flagship device that was about to be launched in the network. And the goal of the exercise was to compare these two devices to make sure that the new device has comparable or better performance with respect to the reference device. And in order to do that, we took a typical user experience application like YouTube and uh, made sure that we did multiple YouTube downloads on both these devices under the same network conditions at the same time. So we wanted to do an apples to apples comparison with YouTube downloads on the reference device and the device under test and look at the typical user experience metrics to make sure that, that the new device is ready for launch. And at the same time, we believed in the device network analytics methodology, so we took a more holistic approach to looking at all of the KPIs related to device network interaction to see if we found anything which would prevent the device from being launched. So when you look at the first set of results that we kind of collected, it became very obvious that these two devices devices were very, very comparable from a user experience perspective. We looked at things like throughput, which is a very important metric that everybody tracks. And when you looked at throughput, both these devices had about six megabits per second of throughput, and it was very comparable in terms of YouTube download performance. We also looked at things like connection failures, connection drops, and all the key user experience metrics. And it was pretty obvious that both these devices were very similar or very comparable in terms of the performance on the network. And so a typical intuitive approach would be to say, yeah, user experience looks great. Both these devices look very similar. The performance is, is perfect. So let's go ahead and launch this device. But that's where, that's where device network analytics comes to the picture to save the day. When you, look at, when you looked at all the different layers of interaction between the device and the network, we found that even though the throughput of the two devices was very similar, the number of device network interactions that were happening um, for device two, which is the device under test, was significantly more than device one. Here, it highlights that the second device made almost twice the number of connections compared to the first device for the same number of YouTube downloads under the same RF conditions or, or under the same network conditions. And this is very telling because it's, it's telling you that you know, even though the typical sense of user experience is very, very similar. The impact that these two devices would have on the network are very different in nature. The second device obviously leads to more signaling and more connections on the network. And this is just one sample point. Fast forward to the day when this particular device gets launched on the network. And obviously, if this is a flagship device, you would think that there would be millions of these devices that are going to be sold in the network. And if each of these devices was to make 10 additional connections in a day, you're looking at tens of millions of connections that are additional connections that the network has to process. And this is what would lead to signaling overload, and it could even bring down the network in some cases. In the past, there have been examples where signaling overload would bring the network crashing down. And I think device network analytics helps save the day by looking at every individual layer and compare the performance of all these layers to make sure that devices are, are uh, working optimally to achieve a great user experience but also to give the great user experience at the right network cost. It obviously does not help the operator if the user experience is great, but if the device is actually causing more data traffic or if it's causing more signaling traffic on the network. Clearly, in this particular case, in, as an impact of the second device, the operator would either have to take the hit on performance because of signaling overload, or it would have to actually buy more boxes, like more MMEs and more signaling-related boxes to really make sure it can take care of the additional traffic that this device is going to generate. So from an ROA perspective, that doesn't look great at all. And this, this is what device network analytics will help to prevent. It will help to give you the right user experience at the right network cost and at the right ROI, essentially. The second case study that we have over here is related to Volti, where we did a mobility drive test with two Volti phones, where one Volti phone was calling another Volti phone. You would set up the connection, 
you would let the connection stay on for about 60 seconds or so, and at the end of it, we would release the connection. And during this drive test, we saw that uh, we were observing one-way audio and drop calls. And before I go into the details of how we go about understanding what caused the drop call, it will be good to go over a high-level analysis of what would you do to debug this kind of a one-way audio and drop call issue for Volti. So the first step would be to understand what caused the Volti drop call. With the IMS network that Volti uses and the protocol that, the, that Volti uses, the, the SIP message called by has a reason code which tells you why the Volti call dropped. So in this particular example, the Volti call drop had a reason code of RTP timeout. What RTP timeout means is that the device did not receive any RTP packets or it did not receive any audio packets for a certain duration of time, and hence the call was dropped. So at the starting point, you at least want to understand what is the reason code for the drop call, and that's the beginning of your analysis. Then when you want to further drill down, you want to start looking at device network interaction. And at that point in time, you want to look at the underlying LT network and see from an RF perspective whether any radio link failures or was the coverage looking poor that could have contributed to the drop call. Because ultimately, the wireless link is the weakest link of the network, and you first want to look at uh, what was happening at the RF layer between the device and the network. And if the, if the RF layer looked good, then you need to start looking at other possibilities that could have contributed to the drop call. So that's what's mentioned in the second and third bullet over here. So once you've eliminated RF or coverage and radio link failures as your issue, then you can start going into the different layers of the protocol stack to see how these audio packets are being propagated from one layer to the next layer between the device and the network. So in this particular case, obviously you want to understand when the, device, when the network is sending the packets, when, it, when it's sending the audio packets for the OLT call, how is it first being received at the physical layer and what kind of block errors are being perceived while those physical layer bytes are being received by the device. Once you know that you've received these packets at the physical layer, you want to see how these packets are being propagated to the upper layers, like the RLC layer and RTP layer, and those, those kind of analysis and traces will help you understand which particular protocol layer is where the packets are not being uh, transferred to the upper layer and could contribute to the drop call or the one-way order that is being experienced here. So this, these are the high-level steps you would follow. You would start off by looking at the reason code for the Volti call drop. You would try and correlate it with RF coverage and uh, RF conditions. And then you would start tracing or start propagating up the different layers of the protocol stack to see how these packets are going from one layer to the next layer and what could have contributed to packet not reaching the upper layers, essentially. So now going to the details. So in this particular case study, once we saw that there was a Volti one-way audio and call drop, as we mentioned, we first looked at the RF conditions uh, from the LT diagnostic monitor logs and tried to look for any signatures like LT radio link failures. And it became very clear that there were no issues with the RF coverage, and uh, the coverage looked fairly good, and there were no radio link failures as well. So as far as the LT network interaction is concerned, at the radio layer, things looked pretty solid and pretty good. And typically, the intuitive thinking at this particular point in time would be that if it is not an RF issue, if it's not the wireless link issue, then this must be an If the RF is good and if the coverage is good, most likely the network must have done something wrong or the network may have dropped these RTP packets and hence that led to the call drop. And this is a very initial reaction that you have once you look at you know, coverage and, and these initial KPI metrics. But that's where device network analysis encourages you to go and look at these different layers to be really sure that this is not a network issue or this is not a device issue. And that's what this example will reveal very soon. So what I'm showing in the chart over here is what we call as a synchronized call flow and KPI chart. So this is a chart where we can actually correlate what is happening in the Volti, SIP, and RTP layer with the underlying LT KPIs. So in this particular example, what we are showing is how the LT call, the Volti call flow in terms of setting up the call flow is present on this chart. And along with that, we can look at what was happening at the physical layer between the network and the device. 
So first I'll just go over the call flow as an example. So as you can see, the call had the red line over here is the originating uh, phone, and the green lines over here are the terminating phone. And as you can see over here, the originating phone starts off by sending a SIP invite, which is nothing but a call origination. And that's followed by ringing between the two phones at this particular point in time. So about a few milliseconds after the call was originated, now the ringing is happening at both the phones. And a few seconds after that, the terminating phone has picked up the call and the call has been answered at this point in time. So this point in time is where the call is established and the audio packets are starting to flow at the physical layer between the network and the UE. And at the end of this, as you can see, there's a call drop that has been experienced by the originating UE. And that's what we're trying to understand as to what's going on that could have contributed to this call drop at this point in time and what has been happening at the different layers in terms of the file layer, RLC layer, RTP layer, and so on. So as you can see in this file layer chart or the physical layer chart, once the call has been established or answered at this point in time, there's a, there's a periodic stream of bytes that are coming in for both the originating phone as well as the terminating phone. As you can see, the red lines and green lines are constantly having traffic or has constantly having audio bytes being sent to the device up, leading up to the drop call. So it's not like, you know, before the drop call, you did not receive any audio packets at the physical layer. Everything from the physical layer's perspective seems to be going on fine over here, and that's evidenced by these red and green lines that seem to be periodic in nature. Every 20 milliseconds, you're getting audio, byte, audio bytes or audio packets, and that does not seem to be a problem at the physical layer in terms of receiving the audio traffic from the network. So then we said, okay, let's go to the next layer, and let's look at the RLC layer. Because once the device receives these packets of the physical layer, it strips off the headers, it tries to reassemble, resegment, and then it, it sends it over to the RLC layer. And what we show over here is an RLC layer trace. As you can see, the call is established at this particular point in time, the answer marker over here. And what the RLC layer trace is showing is, when you see a linear line over here, it means that you're steadily getting packets from the physical layer to the RLC layer. If the packets were not coming from the physical layer to the RLC layer, then you should see a flattening of this line in this particular chart. But that's not what we see. We see that we see a constant progression of RLC layer packets and bytes coming into the phone, both for the originating phone as well as for the terminating phone. And even before the drop call, these packets are constantly coming into the device. So as far as the audio packets and media packets are concerned, it looks like the phone has been receiving these packets perfectly fine, both at the physical layer and the RLC layer. And next, when you look at the RTP layer, that's where things get more interesting, that if you look at the originating UE over here, which is the red line, once the call has been answered, the media packets are coming in steadily into the phone and in sequence, but about 10 seconds before the call drop, you see that there are no new RTP packets that are being received by the UE. And because there are no new packets coming in for 10 seconds, that leads to the RTP timeout, which was what we saw earlier on, and that led to the one-way audio and call drop. It's one-way audio because this originating phone is not receiving any packets uh, at this particular point in time, so it cannot really hear any audio from the terminating phone at this particular point in time, whereas the terminating phone is able to receive uh, and transmit data without any issues at this particular point in time. So this is why it's a one-way audio issue for the originating phone. And once for 10 seconds the originating U does not get any RTP packets, it's declaring the call to be dropped. And this is where device network analysis really comes in to help you understand that this is not a network issue. What this is pointing to the fact that even though the RF conditions seem to be very good, the, the audio packets are going from the network to the device at the physical layer without any issues. From the physical layer, they've been transferred to the RLC layer without any issues. But it's something wrong between the RLC layer and the RTP layer where packets are not making it from the RLC layer to the RTP layer. And that leads to the one-way audio and call drop in this example. And this highlights the importance of synchronized end-to-end -end analysis where you need correlation of different layers from different sources. So in this example, the two different sources for the logs are the diagnostic monitor logs and Wireshark logs. And all these logs need to be correlated and put into perspective in one particular place so that you can correlate these different layers and understand 
where the issue lies and take the appropriate action with respect to the issue. So the root cause for this issue was a device issue where specifically the physical and RLC layer packets on the device were not making it to the RTP layer. They were getting dropped somewhere between the RLC layer and the device, and hence that lead, led to the call drop. The third case study that we have here is uh, a very interesting case study that we did recently where we decided to compare the performance of the four top U.S. operators. And we wanted, to, the goal of the study was not just to look at uh, operator performance in terms of user experience, because like Vivek mentioned, uh, there are a lot of industry reports that you know, compare U.S. operators and, and kind of provide guidance in terms of who is the best operator for data speeds, who is the best operator for reliability, and so on and so forth, which is very good for the end consumer to understand you know, which operator is the best network in terms of user experience. But if I'm an operator, if I'm an infra vendor, if I'm a device chipset vendor, I want to look at it holistically and try and understand that if the performance was good, what caused the performance to be good? Or if the performance was bad, what caused the performance to be bad? Because just looking at you know, who's the best operator in terms of data speed or who's, looking at the, best, who's, look, who's the best operator for reliability is like showing a movie where you know who the heroes are and who the villains are but you don't really know what made the hero to be a hero and what made the villain to be a villain. On top of that, the villain really does not get visibility into what can he fix to become a hero uh, for the end user, essentially. Right? So I think our goal was really to not to just stop at US operator comparison in terms of user experience, but to look at device network analytics from a holistic perspective to see, can we provide actionable insights to these different operators? And can they really use these device network insights to really help improve operator performance and then deliver a better end user experience for each of these operators. And so the idea here was we took uh, four devices, all of the same models across all these four operators, and we went out on a drive test in the Boston area. We spent a few hours in the Boston area trying to collect uh, data, I mean, uh, downloads and uploads for FTP, web, YouTube, and so on. And at the end of it, uh, we wanted to put this through our analytic solution to look at device network interaction and see what kind of actionable information can we get out of it. And the whole idea was to do it in a quick, efficient, and effective manner, which is what we said was the need for the hour. And, the, and everything that we are presenting today is something that we did in less than a day's time frame from the time of doing the test to actually analyzing the results and really providing actionable insights as to what can improve operator performance or what causes one operator to be different from another operator. So when you look at, uh, you know, we, we've done a very comprehensive study of these four operators and looked at device network interaction for these four operators, and we've actually put out a case study uh, as a report on our website, and it's available at uh, azimuthsystems.com slash resource library slash case studies. Please feel free to download that. But at least I wanted to go over some key findings from, some, from the report that we presented uh, a few weeks ago, essentially. So when you look at uh, these individual operators, I'm going to slice and dice the information over here on a per operator basis. You can you know, analyze this in many different angles. But to keep it simple, let's see what, was, what were the highlights for each operator. So if you take operator A, operator A actually had the best data speeds compared to all the other operators that were being compared. They were, operator A had about 20 to 50 percent faster data speed than any other network in the US. And when we looked at more insights into device network analytics, it became clear that this operator was relatively less loaded uh, compared to other operators. And this was evident from control channel loading and some other metrics that we look at for loading. And you can look at our report for more details. But it was that operator A had an advantage where it had less network loading that helped it to achieve high user speeds for the end consumer. But, that, but obviously, like we said, we don't want to just look at data speeds. We want to look at a lot of different metrics to really understand device network interaction for each of these operators. And even though operator A had the best speeds in terms of data downloads, it was actually not the operator with the highest number of device network interactions uh, from a signaling perspective. So if you look at handovers, connections, and all of those device network interactions, 
Operator A had the highest number of device network interactions compared to any of these operators. So even though the throughput was great, it did have one thing that stood out in terms which was bad, which was more device network interactions or more signaling happening on the network. When you look at operator B, the key thing that really stood out for operator B was that to do the same amount of data transfer, to do the same application transfers, operator B's device was actually consuming more battery power in terms of PUSCH power and PUCCH power, which is the shared channel power and the control channel power of the, um, on, in the transfer direction of the battery, essentially. You can see that it was using more battery power, and that was the thing that stood out, that even though other metrics may be comparable or better, from a battery perspective, it was using up more transmit power uh, on the network. As far as operator C is concerned, operator C had a uh, lot of interesting things to talk about. Uh, one of them was it, it had the lowest user speeds, but the reason for the lowest user speed was the fact that the device was spending very little time on the 4G, network, 4G LT network compared to all the other three operators. So for example, for operator C, the device spent only 58% of its time on 4G LTE, whereas all the other three operators the device spent more than 90% of its time on 4G LTE. Also, from a coverage perspective, operator C had relatively poor coverage compared to all the other operators that are being uh, analyzed in this particular scenario. And this is one of the reasons why the device may have spent more time on 3G compared to 4G for operator C. But beyond that, when we dug more into the device network parameters that influence how devices and network interact, it became even more clear as to why the device spent more time on 3G compared to other operators. So for example, the cell selection parameter, which is governing you know, how, what kind of threshold the UE needs to consider before it can stay on the LT network, was set very aggressively for operator C compared to all the other operators. For all the other operators, even at weaker signals, it was allowing the UEs to stay on the LT network. But for operator C, it was more stringent or aggressive uh, in terms of its thresholds for allowing the device to stay on the LT network, and hence couple that with the relatively poor coverage, that leads to the device spending lesser time on the 4G LT network, and that leads to poor user experience in terms of data download speeds and over the air throughput. And the last thing is about operator D, and this was a very interesting finding because what we found was operator D has made a lot of investments from a spectrum and E node B perspective to provision enough capacity for the users. And that actually clearly showed up in terms of OER scheduled throughput. So if, if I were to ignore backhaul, if I were to ignore TCP layer effects, and purely look at OER scheduled throughput perform, performance, and typically as we talked about, the, the RF link or the wireless link is the weak link or the bottleneck in the network typically, that, that link actually looked very good for operator D where it seemed to have the highest OER physical layer scheduled throughput compared to all the other three operators, but that did not translate into good user experience from a user data speed perspective. And so what that is telling you is that operator D may have solved the difficult challenge of you know, making sure the OER speeds or the bottleneck on the wireless link uh, is good, but there might be issues at the backhaul or at the TCP layer that may be causing the end user experience to be poor. So if those issues were to be fixed, that operator D could become the best operator among all these four operators, or it could be at least comparable to operator A in terms of its end user data speed performance. So as you can see, I think device network analysis really helps you to identify the good from the bad in a holistic view and provides you with actionable insights that you can then use to improve uh, both the operator performance as well as end consumer. So it's a win-win for everybody out there rather than just, just pointing as to why one operator is worse compared to the other operator. And that's really what we are trying to do with, with our solution for device network analytics. And I think that's a good segue to kind of you know, hand it over to Vivek, who's going to talk more about the Azimuth solution for device network analytics, which has been uh, a, a, a great saver in terms of you know, identifying and isolating the root cause of critical performance issues before they hit the end consumer. Thank you. Thanks, Nandish. So, so we saw how uh, 
you know, technology has gotten more complex, as I mentioned, existing tools are not adequate. And through three case studies, one that spoke about Volti, one that spoke about device network interaction, and then the last case study that spoke about how different operators compare to one another, Nandish highlighted the need and the power of device network analytics. So what I wanted to do was talk, uh, you know, give a very quick overview of the analytics solution that Azimuth has. Azimuth has a purpose-built device benchmarking solution. Um, actually, I should tell benchmarking not just for devices, device network. It's a purpose-built solution that is powered with device network analytics. When, when we designed this product, there were two central philosophies. The first philosophy was to reduce the amount of time it takes for you to go from the data to the relevant information. So tying back to my earlier comment, there's a lot of information. There is information overload. So if you are a user, how do I make your life easy? How do I make it easy for the user to very quickly identify whether there is an issue or not? And if there is an issue, identify or isolate the potential root cause for the issue. And the second thing is we built what we call a system interaction KPIs, which catch the whole device network interaction piece, which is so very critical. The solution essentially consists of two pieces. There is an automation piece and there is an analytics piece. The automation piece is called DAC, Device Automation and Control. This allows us to automate the device, diagnostic monitor, laptop, network probes, so pretty much anything associated with collecting data. The second piece of it is really the brains of the whole solution, and this is the analytics engine which takes all this data in as the input to come up with a set of KPIs and KQIs that give you a complete view of performance. So if I were to look at the workflow, you run a test case, the test case uh, can be run using the automation solution, can be run across multiple devices. The automation controls not only the devices. So on the device, not only can I make a phone call, voice call, YouTube browsing session, but I also have the ability to collect KPIs and KQIs. For instance, how long did it take for a web page to load? How long did a YouTube video take to play? All these tests are done across the devices in a synchronized fashion. That is a key point. By synchronized, we mean that all the devices are doing the same operation at the same point of time. This is critical for ensuring that you're doing an apples to apples comparison. Without the synchronization, it would not be an apples to apples comparison. So you collect all this data. You collect, you run a test. This, this test can be run either in the lab or it can be run in the field. It can be run on a single device or it can be run on multiple devices. Once you finish running the test, you take all this data and feed it into DNA. You take the diagnostic monitor log, Wireshark logs, uh, the user experience log, and you import all the data from all the devices into DNA. And DNA immediately generates a report for you. That is what you see right here in the graphic. What this report basically shows you is it compares the different aspects. It would compare the different devices, or it would compare the different networks across different layers. So this is really where, using the, uh, going back to the analogy that Nandish used, peeling the different layers of the onion, this is really where you tell the user, okay, you see those cells highlighted in red, you tell the user there is something going on here. And then it makes it easier for you to dig in deeper by tying all related values so that it makes it very, very simple and fast for a user to come to run a test, import the logs, and quickly identify if there is a problem or not, and if there is a problem, to go focus on the right area. Once you do this, let's I compare two devices, I find an issue. Once there is an issue, I know it's a device issue, not a network issue. Then I tell my OEM, here is a log, take this log, I want you to go figure out what's going on. Or even if I'm the op even as an operator myself, I might want to do some detailed analysis, similar to the Volti debugging that Nandi showed you. In that case, you have the ability to go look at an interface here, which shows you much, much more detailed information. You see a synchronized view of every event, every network event, every significant event, every RTP SIP event as a function of different KPIs, different KQIs, and different RF conditions. So the workflow 
has been optimized so that it's very much in line with how you do your testing today. You do your testing using automation, feed the data into the analytics engine and it immediately, there is no need for you to go generate a custom report. There's no need for you to figure out what goes into the report. Immediately you have a report that shows you, that compares the different devices or compares the different networks. So, to summarize, there is a very strong need for a new methodology, a new methodology that provides you a holistic view, an end-to-end -end view of performance. This view is necessary for us to answer questions such as, what is the impact of a device on my network? If I'm an operator and I'm about to launch a new device, what is the impact of this net device going to be on my network? What is the impact of this device going to be on my other subscribers? It helps answer questions like if I have two devices with very similar user experience, are the devices the same or are the devices uh, different from a network standpoint? An azimuth analytics solution is a purpose-built solution optimized um, and that is powered with device network analytics. And this solution basically reduces the amount of time it takes for you to go from all the, da all the data you have to the relevant information. So basically, it tackles the information overload problem. Second thing is it's targeted towards the typical users. You know, as I mentioned early on, one of the challenges with existing tools, the tools are built for one or two percent of the users. They are built for people who've designed LT, not for the typical user. At one point in my career, I used to be a drive test engineer, and I found many times to even see whether it's a device or network issue, I'd have to pull over on the side of the highway, spend 15 or 20 minutes before even you know what's going on. So that the analytics tradition that we've built is geared towards the typical user. And then the last thing, and I think this is very critical, is it catches the blind spot that you're not catching today. It tells you there is an issue uh, before you, an issue when you wouldn't have caught it otherwise. And this is very critical because the worst thing you can do is you think everything is fine, you launch a new device or you roll out a new technology You've gone through your due diligence and then you find that there is an issue that you didn't catch that brings down your entire network and impacts your user experience. So the Azimuth Analytics solution is built around device network analytics, reduces the amount of time to go from data to information, it's built for the typical users, and gives you preview or gives you uh, visibility into issues that you wouldn't have caught otherwise. So with that, we would like to thank all of you for joining us today. We do appreciate the time. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, please bring them up now. If not, you can also send us an email at info at azimuthsystems.com. Great, thanks Vivek. And um, uh, we did have a couple questions come in from the audience. So uh, the first one we had is, how does this methodology of device network analytics apply when you look at the most common tests, such as throughput testing? Sure, uh, I can take that, uh, Kyle. So, the interesting device network solution or the analytic solution is doesn't really matter whether you're looking at throughput or you know connection failures or connection drops. What we believe is to look at all the layers of protocol stack that I was just explaining earlier. And as far as throughput is concerned, it, it becomes even more critical to understand the interaction at the physical layer, the MAC layer, the RLC layer, and so on, to understand why the throughput is good or bad between devices or between regression tests or between benchmarking scenarios. And as a matter of fact, we actually had one use case where the throughput between the two devices, between a reference device and a duct, was significantly different. And it took us a few minutes to really figure out what was going on because when we started peeling the different layers to our solution, we found that the MIMO rank performance of one phone was relatively lower or significantly lower compared to the other phone. And that really led to over-the-air throughput to be low, and that really led to the device having lower throughput. So the solution is agnostic to the, the application or the KPI that you're trying to track, because for everything that you do out there, we provide you the entire end-to-end -end view of all the different layers, and it's all there in front of you to quickly correlate the information and say why the throughput was bad or why a particular KPI from a user experience was bad. I hope that answers the question. Great, thanks. Uh, next one we had come in. Does the tool assess Wi-Fi performance uh, across different SSIDs? So, I mean, 
mean, uh, right now the tool does not uh, look into Wi-Fi performance. So we have plans to look at it in the future, but at this particular point in time, we do not look at Wi-Fi performance. Great. So next question coming in is, have some of your operator customers used the device to network analytics other than to solve issues? Okay, uh, Kyle, I'll, I'll take that. So I think, you know, obviously one one very common use, uh, one way to reduce this information is what Nandish mentioned, which is essentially to, um, which is essentially you know, to tackle the issues from a technical standpoint. But I think I, I, I wanted to touch on a couple of non-technical uh, use cases for this. So we've had operators who would use this information from a commercial standpoint in the sense that let's say I'm an operator and I find a, a device has much more, uh, if, if I find that a device has much more interaction, uh, much more signaling than another device, operators start building that into part of their commercial negotiations with the OEM. They would tell the OEM, instead of me paying you $200 for the device, I'm going to pay $180 for the device. So that's one thing that operators do. Second thing that operators also do is if they expect, if they know for a fact that a particular device is going to cause a lot of chatter, they have a lot of information at hand which tells them, these are the geographical areas where I expect the device to be sold a lot early on. So they actually prep the regional teams. They tell the regional teams, know that when this device comes out, we expect to see a significant increase in the amount of signaling. So they train the local teams so that they know how to tackle these things. And in some cases, they go even so far as making changes to the network settings or even um, you know, adding extra infrastructure. And then the last part of it is where operators start using this as a part of their entire life cycle. And what I mean by that is they would start working with both the OEM and chipset vendor, and they would track this performance over a period of time and work proactively with both of them to make sure that, okay, let's say this is the first device you've brought me and I see this much of device network interaction. They almost set it as a goal so that when the OEM comes back the next time, instead of just looking at throughput performance, call drop performance, one of the KPIs based on which the OEM is also rated is aspects of device network interaction. So there is a lot of uh, non-technical uh, use cases that customer operators use this for today. Thanks. Um, another question that came in is, how long did the operator comparison case study you spoke about earlier take? Like I was saying uh, in the presentation earlier, Kyle, end-to-end uh, -end, from the time we automated the test case on commercial devices to the point of generating the DNA report, which talks about all these tables that we showed, it took us less than a day to do the whole exercise, essentially. Great. Um, and uh, we had another question come in about the case study. Um, did you collect your data on actual devices and can you go into that process a little bit more? Yes, absolutely. These are all commercial you know, devices that we went to the stores for each of the operators and picked up these devices. We made sure that these devices were actually kind of flagship devices that you know are pretty prominent in today's networks for all these operators and uh, you know yeah, these are all like typical end-user devices that are very, very easily used by the end-users today, essentially. Great, thanks. Um, and they are they the same model as well. So we, we made sure that they are of the same model to, to do a more apples-to-apples -apples comparison. Okay. Um, another question we had come in. Do you provide test plans for public venue environments? Yes, um, yes, we do. I just, in fact, um, answered that question, Kyle. So, yeah, we do. Like many, the, our, um, the way we work with some of our customers, and these could be operators, um, OEMs, or chipset vendors, sometimes operators would come to us and tell us, hey, I'm about to roll out a new technology. Help me create a test plan um, that focuses on, uh, the, help me create a test plan that helps ensure that the technology that's being rolled out works as expected and it's being rolled out optimally. So we typically, sometimes we do an end-to-end -end service where we work with the operator, define the test plan, and they, either they execute it or in some cases we execute it for them, then feed it through our analytics engine and go through this whole feedback loop. And the reason I wanted to highlight that whole end-to-end -end experience is because 
you know, many te- like right now with growing number of technologies, growing number of bands, what you find is it's very easy for uh, you know very easy for people to tell. I want you to go around thousand tests, and that will give give you complete coverage. That is not our goal. Our goal is really about how do I help you test your device? How do I help you test your network in the most optimal fashion without us adding thousand test cases? How do we use our expertise of the system, our expertise of the network and the device to tell, here are the right set of 20 tests for you to run so that you have 95% confidence that you validated both the device and the network. Great, thanks. Um, That's about all the time we have. Uh, For any questions we didn't get to, both the panelists will receive a copy of those questions. Um, But yeah, I want to thank both uh, Vivek uh, Vada Kupatu, Director and Head of Analytics Business at Azimuth, and Nandesh Chalashazar, Director and Head of Engineering at Azimuth, for a great webinar. Um, Again, this has been Ignore Device Network Interaction and Risk Your Customers, presented by Azimuth. Thank you, Vivek and Nandish. Thanks, Carl. Thanks, Carl. Thank you all. Thank you.